Do you believe that you are a sinner? Yes, I believe it. I am a sinner. How do you know this? From the Ten Commandments, which I have not kept. Are you sorry for your sins? Yes, I am sorry that I have sinned against God. What have you deserved from God because of your sins? His wrath and displeasure, temporal death, and eternal damnation. See Romans 6, 21 and 23. Do you hope to be saved? Yes, that is my hope. In whom then do you trust? In my dear Lord Jesus Christ. Who is Christ? The Son of God, true God, and man. How many gods are there? Only one, but there are three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. What has Christ done for you that you trust in him? He died for me and shed his blood for me on the cross for the forgiveness of sins. Did the Father also die for you? He did not. The Father is God only, as is the Holy Spirit, but the Son is both true God and true man. He died for me and shed his blood for me. How do you know this? From the Holy Gospel, from the words instituting the sacrament, and by his body and blood given me as a pledge in the sacrament. What are the words of institution? Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Do you believe, then, that the true body and blood of Christ are in the sacrament? Yes, I believe it. What convinces you to believe this? The word of Christ, Take, eat, this is my body, drink of it, all of you, this is my blood. What should we do when we eat his body and drink his blood, and in this way receive his pledge? We should remember and proclaim his death and the shedding of his blood as he taught us. This do, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Why should we remember and proclaim his death? First, so that we may learn to believe that no creature could make satisfaction for our sins. Only Christ, true God and man, could do that. Second, so we may learn to be horrified by our sins and to regard them as very serious. Third, so we might find joy and comfort in Christ alone and through faith in him, be saved. What motivated Christ to die and make full payment for your sins? His great love for his Father, and for me, and other sinners, as it is written in John 14, Romans 5, Galatians 2, and Ephesians 5. Finally, why do you wish to go to the sacrament? That I may learn to believe that Christ, out of great love, died for my sin, and also learn from him to love God and my neighbor. What should admonish and encourage a Christian to receive the sacrament frequently? First, both the command and the promise of Christ the Lord. Second, his own pressing need because of which the command, encouragement, and promise are given. But what should you do if you are not aware of this need and have no hunger and thirst for the sacrament? To such a person, no better advice can be given than this. First, he should touch his body to see if he still has flesh and blood. Then he should believe what the scripture says of it in Galatians 5 and Romans 7. Second, he should look around to see whether he's still in the world and remember that there will be no lack of sin and trouble, as the scriptures say in John 15 and 16 and in 1 John 2 and 5. Third, he will certainly have the devil also around him, who with his lying and murdering day and night will let him have no peace, within or without, as the scriptures picture him in John 8 and 16, 1 Peter 5, Ephesians 6, and 2 Timothy 2. Now note, these questions and answers are no child's play, but are drawn up with great earnestness of purpose by the venerable and devout Dr. Luther for both young and old. Let each one pay attention and consider it a serious matter, for St. Paul writes to the Galatians in chapter 6, Do not be deceived, God cannot be mocked.